All right, guys, welcome back. This Saturday's a great card. Awesome fucking prelims. A great main card. I told you guys, Gilbert Burns was a killer. If you guys are not listening to this show, you should start listening now because I've been talking about Gilbert Burns for a very, very long time. He's been on the show multiple times. Casey Kinney, our good friend that was on this show, had another amazing performance this week. Before we get into this week's amazing performances, because there was multiple that we're going to discuss this past week, I want to talk to you about John Jones. The light heavyweight champion has been making huge, huge headlines here lately. One, he was actually out in his, you know, native Albuquerque, New Mexico, and he was stopping you know, people who were vandalizing, stopping people that were trying to start the riots. He was trying to, you know, play peacemaker. So hats off to John Jones for that. You know, he doesn't get kudos from us, especially from you and I, a whole hell of a lot. But this time I am going to give him his kudos, you know, because they are due. He's doing what other people should be doing for their cities, you know, and he's doing it for absolutely nothing. Now, the other important headlines that he's been making is he, he's saying that he's done with the UFC at this point, that they're not paying him what he deserves. And he, as in so many words, has said that he straight relinquishes the title. Wally Wall, what do you make of this entire situation? Uh, first of all, let's talk about the first issue, which is not really an issue. It's something that we should, you know, give him uh, some applaud about that we need to applaud him for what he's doing right now going on the street helping his city that that's that's great like uh, he's sending a good example and that's something john jones doesn't do uh, very often well, let's not shit about yeah let's not shit about him maybe this is the first time we will not shit about john jones uh he's doing something great i believe something that a lot of a lot of people have the balls to do but he's doing it right now like Chuck imagine Lino if you're out he's also been out in huntington beach doing yeah. the same thing i mean Huge names in the, especially in the light heavyweight yeah. division, just legends. Yeah. Two, two that's, arguably of the greatest light heavyweight champions doing what they can to try to keep the peace here in America. Because as you know, we talked about it a little last week, you know, the yeah. killing of a completely unarmed black man yet again, this time in Minnesota. Uh, George did not deserve to go out like that. It's an unfortunate situation, and people are angry. And obviously, you have people that are going to protest. I mean, they protested the Rodney King beatings, you know, almost 30 years ago, and they haven't learned anything since then. And I just don't, I don't understand what it's going to take. It, it, it's a wild situation. But like I said, I applaud John Jones. I applaud Chuck Liddell and everyone else that's going out there to, you know, take a stand in understand that protesting is the way to go but there's a way to do it and there's a way not to do it and looting the stores is not the way to do it yeah i agree with you and when it comes for the um, vacating the the ufc belts all i think is just uh, he's trying to negotiate with the ufc this is what i think i think at the end of the day what what john jones wants because for his last maybe six fights in his mma career he wants to make money that's what he wants he wants big he wants big fights and big pay-per-views that's what he wants so uh, maybe the amount of money is asking for isn't that realistic but if you put him on a, on a great card like if you put him on a, a mcgregor card and if he accepts to be the the co-main event in this type of card maybe we we can talk about this type of money maybe it would be an interesting situation. I don't know if you could get John Jones to take a backseat to anybody in the UFC. Yeah. I think if there is one man that you could talk him into doing it for, it would be Conor McGregor. That's uh, yeah. the only other option at this point, because I, I think he is the biggest draw period. And I think if you're talking about who is the goat as the biggest draw, hands down, I mean, it's Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor has really changed the pay scale in the UFC completely. Guys used to not even make close to a million dollars, and Conor has hit that out the park multiple times. I really believe that his fight against Ngannou is uh, the fight that he can make the, mo the most amount of money out of it. See, I, I, I'm going to stop you right there. I think that's the second, the second amount. I, I think a fight between him 
and current middleweight champion Israel Adesanya is the oh, yeah. biggest yeah. draw, yeah. especially when it just comes to the sheer rivalry. Those yeah. two have been going at it back and forth now for a, a better part of six, seven months. So yeah. you build this up for another year. We talk about next July. We're talking next, you know, when we could finally have fans back at arena, have the next international fight week, possibly in Raider Stadium, headlined by your former light heavyweight champion taking on your middleweight champion of the world. Yeah, but this will not be the next Ades- uh, Adesanya fight. Adesanya wants to defend oh, the no. two or more I times, believe you know, so. Adesanya will at least fight three more times this year. Yeah. That's it. As soon as they figure out Fight Island, I think Adesanya and Kyle first fight you. Yeah, he needs to fight against Paulo Costa before. There's some fights. There's some fights in that middleweight division. But that may be good because uh, if he win those fights, he will gain more popularity and he will gain more money. So then John Jones really can have that uh, big payday. But. Uh, yes. Yeah, but I'm not sure that this will happen like uh, next year or whatever. Like when Adesanya is talking about it, he's talking about it in the future. So I don't know if it's a uh, near future or or is it far. So I, I'm not sure about that. It'll be an interesting situation. We'll love to see that one play out. But as of now, we are going to recap last week into UFC Woodley versus Burns. I think it's, what is it, UFC Apex 1? I don't know what the fuck we're calling it, okay? We're just making shit yeah. up at this point. It's fight night. <laughs> we're making shit up at this point. It's fight night something, 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 all right? Yeah. Now, to start off the night, Chris Gutierrez had an amazing performance against Vince Morales. He really showed that you could utilize the leg kicks perfectly. He damaged Vince Morales' left lead leg at the beginning of the fight, and as soon as Vince Morales switched up, so did Chris Gutierrez, and he started attacking the opposite lead leg. Now, at this point, I mean, it, Vince Morales was completely helpless out there, especially when it came to the later part of the second round when he did finish him. It, it looked like it was hard for Vince to even stand. It was a hell of a performance by Chris Gutierrez, and I would love to see him up against the strikers in that featherweight division. I think the kid's got a great future, and as he showed you, he is very versatile with his striking. Yeah, I believe he, uh, Gutierrez came up with uh, the perfect game plan, and he didn't change it, even though the, the fire, the uh, Vince Morales changed his stand, you know, but he still kept on kicking those legs until, you know, <laughs> until uh, he broke him. So yeah, this is yeah, a good, that's exactly, yeah. he broke him. So it was a great way to start the card, you know. Start a card with a finish like that, it's always great. Yeah, I mean, I I wasn't expecting Gutierrez to go out there and put that type of performance on. And uh, trust me, he opened my eyes on Saturday night. It was an amazing performance. Up next, though, Casey Kinney did not disappoint, getting a beautiful submission three minutes and three seconds into the first round against Lewis Smolka. As him and I talked about, he planned on going out there and smoking Smolka and getting another fight here soon. So uh, we might see if that comes to fruition. But for Casey Kinney, he just he bounced back from his first UFC loss, and he looked very, very good in this performance. Yeah, against um, a well-rounded fighter like Luis Smolka, to have that first round finish like that, it's something uh, big for uh, Casey Kinney. And uh, you yeah. know, yeah, it, it, it was a, a flawless it, performance. It elevates Kenny right back up into the 15 through 20 discussion. I think he's a higher part of that 15 through 22, probably like 15, 16. I, I would really love to see him up against the elite of the Bantamweight division. You have to understand when Casey Kenny came into the UFC, he was not a Bantamweight. He has now been just filling his body out to be a Bantamweight. So he is finally putting on that weight. Yeah. He looked a lot bigger, a lot faster, a lot stronger in the octagon on Saturday. I'd love to see him against some top flight talent. When do you think we're going to see him next? Uh, two, three months, if that. If that. Yeah. Do you Six think that weeks. maybe he would step up uh, if, I don't, uh, someone? I don't think he was injured. I don't think he was injured yeah, at all. He wasn't. was barely touched in that fight. Maybe took a couple shots outside of that. Uh, I could see him being ready in six months, unless there's something that we don't know. In the next cards, if someone, uh, you know, can't fight, do you think that he can? He will step up? Maybe not the next one. 
But yeah, I could man. definitely see, like, if there's a card in about three weeks, you could see them giving him a ring for sure. I think just because of the Kevin Holland situation yeah. where he was going to fight on one card and he was going to fight on another, but then he didn't fight because he was injured. I just think that'll kind of shy the UFC away from doing something else like that. But yeah. I, I definitely think, like I said, three to six weeks is not out of the realm of, you know, realistic when you come to Casey Kenny returning. Now, one man who made his UFC debut, Brandon Royval, had a huge, huge, huge performance against an elite flyweight in Tim Elliott. Tim Elliott has had nothing but tough fights since coming back to the UFC, looking amazing in every single one of his performance. But the young kid, Brandon Royval, came out there in the second round, three minutes and 18 seconds, got the submission. Tim Elliott in the first round really looked like he was going to control the fight and control and dictate the pace. Brandon Royvelle got that submission. The kid is slick. And he's definitely going to have a number next to his name later on this week. I'm excited to see what the future has for him. Tim Elliott really felt weird with the because the arena was empty. Because yes. in between the rounds, you can hear him speak to his coach saying that it's too... Like there's there's no no noise to there's so much silence. Do you think that maybe this uh, didn't help him because he was fired up in that first round, not having that crowd reaction to push you? Maybe did he slow down because of that? Possibly. You, you I mean, you've seen fighters, especially guys like uh, Darren Elkins. Okay, when they yeah. get that rush from the crowd, you could tell it. You know, it, it quote unquote yeah. hooks them up. Yeah. That one for you. It's something, yeah, it's something, it, something. You can tell, you know what I mean? Like, it, it really works. These guys go out there and they just fucking put a killing on some people. Yeah. It's uh, it's definitely an interesting thing to look at if, you know, some guys perform better with the crowd, some guys perform better without the crowd. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get enough, you know, fights without the crowd to be able to j- f- judge that fairly. But I definitely think there's some merit to it. Yeah, I agree with you. And it was a... Uh... A great, uh, a huge second round for uh, Brandon. He really looked good in that second round, you know. When Definitely. he turned everything up, you know, because he lost that first round. The way he turned everything up was, uh, was now. Now, like I told you, there was four amazing performances on this yeah. prelims. The next one caught the attention of you, uh, amazing actress Halle Berry. She said, "What an amazing performance he put on." Mr. Jamel Hill had two knockdowns and a total of 14 strikes in one minute and 51 seconds of the entire fight, finishing Klitson Abreu with phenomenal form. I, I really think one day this could could challenge John Jones. Yeah. Uh... Maybe, because, you know, you have the record, he is undefeated right now, you yes. have the striking power, you know, because... For uh, sure. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, you know, he didn't take any damage, maybe we can see him fight again in a in couple of weeks. Uh, Jamel here really looked amazing in this fight. Flawless yeah. victory, uh, there's nothing negative to say about this performance. Right now is definitely the best time for, you know, the fighters who are definitely de- willing to fight every other yeah. week. Because the UFC is willing to use their guys right now because of the situation that we're in. I mean, I believe it was Ben Askren who said it earlier. The 145-pound, 155-pound, and 185-pound champion can't even leave their countries at this point in time to even come and fight. So until you actually get an infrastructure on Fight Island, there's no way to even defend any of those titles. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, because the situation is weird right now, but you you can still uh, turn it to your advantage, you know, being active, you know. And when we we go back. Look at what Gilbert has done. Yeah, exactly. We'll talk about him a little later in the main event, but look at exactly what he's done, just capitalizing on every opportunity. From the moment he beat Damian Maya and found out that Leon Edwards was not going to make it for this Woodley fight, he threw his name in the hat right away not even knowing if it was going to come to fruition. This man has done this many, many times. And sometimes it never worked. Well, right now is a time where it's going to work more than often than not. And yeah. it really has catapulted him into this title picture. Yeah, exactly. Now, Donald Cowboy Cerrone's protege, Daniel Rodriguez, gets the unanimous decision victory 
over his longtime regional rival, Gabe Green. And now these two were scheduled to fight on the regional circus, you know, way back when, about two, three years ago. It never came to fruition because of injuries. Now these two finally fight each other on yet one of the biggest stages of them all. Crazy, crazy performance. I bet you there was a, a lot of animosity between the two going into it, and that's why I think we've seen the more of a sluggish performance by Daniel Rodriguez. It wasn't as crisp as we're used to. He has yeah. very clean striking. I don't think that we've seen enough of it on Saturday, and I would definitely love to see him run it back with somebody he doesn't have so much animosity with. Maybe because he was his longtime rival. That's what. He, well, that's why he, it was too personal. But it's a good fight, you know. We, we had a lot of. <laughs> it was a brawl, so we can't we can't say that it wasn't a good fight, you know. Maybe it wasn't his best performance, but it was a, definitely a good fight. Now. Uh, one amazing performance was Caitlin Kokajian, yeah. a not so impressive performance, and Tina Shevchenko kind of really went out there and fell flat on the situation where she could have capitalized and really, like, you know, we talked about Burns, capitalized and put him herself right in the title picture of up against her sister, Valentina Shevchenko, younger sister, that is. I'd like to thank you for that YouTube subscriber that pointed that out to us. Antonina is the older sister. Mm. Now... Antonina really could have catapulted herself, but it just seemed like she fell flat, especially when it came to the grappling. Caitlin Caucasian had the perfect game plan. Go in there and it, obviously don't kickbox with a kickboxer. Take her to the ground and put her in a world that she's not used to. Yeah. We said that maybe, you know, Antonina will, because her sister already fought against Caitlin, maybe she would give her some advice. Maybe Caitlin was easier for her to fight against Antonina because she had that first-hand experience fighting as Valentina. You know, we didn't talk a lot about that la last week, but Caitlin really looked good. It, you know, uh, when you look at the stats, it's not even, a, there's not even a debate if the decision was right, you know, so... Absolutely and the fight, not. Yeah. Total strikes, Caitlin Kokeji landed 200 out of 240. That is 83%. Yeah. Antonina Shevchenko, 37 of 76 at 48.7%. Now, significant strikes, because that's a huge importance. Antonina threw a lot of significant strikes compared to her number of total strikes, 25 yeah. out of 64. But... I mean, uh, Caitlin Kokajian threw more significant strikes than Antonina threw strikes, period. And that was 79 out of 108 with a 67 percentage. Now, the biggest focal point, like I said, was on the ground. Four submission tips for Caitlin Kokajian. Obviously, all of them were stuffed by Antonina Shevchenko. But the three takedowns, you knew Caitlin was going to come in there and just grind you out. Yeah. How do you let three takedowns happen like that? Yeah, the pre I, mean, I think that the pressure was too much because Caitlin came out wanting to kill, you know. So, so yes. I don't think Antonina had any chance in this fight. So I sure. think she thought it was Valentina across from her. She was trying to get some payback. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and she's right. You know, she needs to do that. If she wants that title fight again, that's what she needs to do. Yes. And then I, I want to give you kudos real quick before we get on to this next fight, because you called the performance of this next young lady in the opening bout of the main card of UFC Woodley versus Burns. Mackenzie Dern went in there and in two minutes and 36 seconds, she submitted Hannah Cypher with what was the very first knee bar in the history of women's MMA inside of the UFC. Now, how did you see this performance going, and was it everything that you expected? Uh, maybe, you know, I didn't know exactly what kind of Mackenzie Dern we're going to see, you know. But I believe we saw the best kind of Mackenzie Dern we could yes. hope for. There's no debate about her jiu-jitsu skills, you know. Uh, she is, yeah, she is sure the her. best jiu-jitsu artist in uh, the female division. She is, no doubt about it. Yeah, I mean, it would be hard. To find any way, if we're talking about pure jujitsu, it, it would be hard to m maybe you could look at some of those Brazilians, but I mean, even then, I, she, I, she, I'm she's not better interested. than them. I, yeah, I really think that I, she's better think, than them. I think that you, you might be right, but she has also shown us 
very, very improved striking. And I want to point that out because I don't think a lot of people are going to give Mackenzie Dern credit for her striking. I'll be, it is a little wild. It's a little wild, like, you know, UFC 250's co-main event headliner, Felice Spencer. Same yeah. style, but these two women can take you to the ground and finish you wherever they want. It got Mackenzie Dern an extra 50 Gs, put on one hell of a performance for her. And I, like I've been saying, and I know she had the last hiccup in the first one in her professional career in her last fight. Was she fought Amanda Rebus, correct? Yeah. Now, that was right after she had just got done having her baby. Yeah. This is her second fight post-mortem. Now, I want to point out she hasn't missed weight, and she has looked very good making the straw weight limit both times. So I want to give her kudos for that because I know a lot of people have been giving her shit. Like I've been saying, uh, Mackenzie Dern has a bright future here. If the striking it continues to ascend like it has been, she could be dangerous one day down the road. I really think that she is the Damien Maya of the female divisions because if she worked her striking just enough so that she can – every time grapple and take people to the ground, it will be very tough for uh, the other females in her division. Now, you say Damien Maya, but I, 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 I don't... I think if you classify her striking as the same as Damien Maya's, it's almost a little bit of a slap in the face to Mackenzie Dern, because I think even at this point in time, Mackenzie Dern's current state of striking she is better yeah. than the best that we've ever seen yeah. damien maya and I, you agree with me correct yeah i agree with you I'm, i was just uh, pointing out the fact that damien maya used his striking you know just to take people to the ground and that's think, what she needs to do every time i think she's, she's gonna be more level. like Khabib be oh maybe I can she see that, has yeah. excellent grappling top top of the world grappling yeah. And her striking is getting better and better and better and better. I mean, there's no fluke. Yeah. Khabib can box. <laughs> I mean, he's shown it multiple he times can, now. Yeah. He's looked very, very good doing so. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, obviously, I can't wait to see what the future has for Mackenzie Dern. But uh, I, I think a top 15 strawweight is next for her. Another man who's going to be cracking the top 20 to 20 or 15 here soon. Roosevelt Roberts has an amazing performance against an upstart Brock Weaver with a second round submission, three minutes and 26 seconds into that round. Now with your perform, do you think Roosevelt Roberts performance was more a Roosevelt Roberts doing or do you think that Brock Weaver missing weight played into his performance in his downfall on Saturday night uh, I'm not sure about that I saw a lot of fighters we saw some fighters you know missing weight and then not not performing well but we saw the opposites Mackenzie Dern missed weight I don't know how many times in the first fights in the UFC and she won every time so uh, maybe I don't think it's that. I just think that uh, Roberts was better, a better fighter in that uh, in that night. Roosevelt Roberts definitely looks like a, the more. How do I put this? He seems like the more refined fighter. He he definitely has his skills honed a lot more than Brock Weaver. And he just yeah. doesn't put himself in the dangerous situation where Brock is willing to put himself in that firefight. I think Roberts is more of a calculated striker. And as you can tell, he's very slick on the ground. Yeah. Roosevelt Roberts has a very, very bright future in the UFC's lightweight division. I want to say he's only lost, what, once since being in the UFC? Yeah. That was to Vince Pichel. We actually had Vince Pichel on that week of yeah. that fight. So it's because he came on the show. That's probably why. Exactly. <laughs> now, what was next for us this week? So we had Billy uh, uh, Quarantillo against Spike uh, Carlisle. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I told everyone to watch that fight. I just want to point that out real quick. I fucking called it. I knew this fight was going to be amazing. It was easily the best fight of the night. Hell of a performance by Corintillo. Did you see Carlisle almost get knocked out in the first round? Yeah. Dude, well, and... that, what the fuck was going on, bro? Why are you walking away? Especially, how the hell are you going to turn your back on such a dangerous fighter like Billy Corintillo? 
I don't know. I think uh, things. <laughs> I believe this thing happens, man. He went to decision, to be fair, but Billy, yeah. like, yeah, he's he rocked. It was him too with much. Yeah, yeah, it was too. Uh, the fight went uh, in Spike, every. Spike yeah, Carlisle starts faster than most people fucking have ever even thought of wanting to start. That yeah. dude is like he's shot out of a rocket and he's just going, 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 going strong for the first five minutes. I think, and obviously as we've seen on Saturday a little bit of that, that pace is just too much to keep up. If he honed it back just a fucking tad, like 15%, I think he would have an amazing pace that people wouldn't be able to hold on to for 15 minutes. You, It's uh, it's too hard to keep the pace, you know. The uh, uh, Let's be real. The only fighters that really keep the pace are the Kamaru Usmans and the yes. uh, Colby Convicton uh, against, you know, Robert Lauder, but he couldn't keep the pace against Usman, you know? So you see the level of well, yeah, We knew that the was Habib, happen, yeah, we, the, we knew that was The Habib happen. level. Like, but those are grapplers. It's hard to keep that pace when you try They're to wrestling. strike and grapple. It, yeah, you, you, you mix it up. It's, it's not easy. So uh, going... 100% in the first round, it's for sure a game plan, but if you don't finish it, it, it will be tough for you in the second and third round. Yes, for sure. Now, in the co-main event, Augusto Sakai really showed that he is here, and he has made a huge statement back-to-back very, very top contenders in the heavyweight division, Blagoy Ivanov this time, Andre Arlovsky a couple months before. Now, Augusto Sakai, I mean... Do you think at one point he might be able to reach the top of that heavyweight division? Listen, he is in a division where uh, two, or th- two or three good fights and you are right in the mix for talking about a title fight. Uh, maybe not right now because you have DC and Stipe, but in the near future, yes. And uh, I wanted to ask you, do you think that, and uh, this would be kind of a rough question, but do you think that Blogoy is uh, was an overrated fighter? I oh okay. Uh, I I wouldn't say that he was overrated, but uh, I just I I want to say that he had a lot of hype of surrounding him because of Huge. the stabbing. Yeah. Uh, I, for those of you who don't know, he was stabbed in uh, Bulgaria, I believe, yeah. his native country, uh, in his chest you could see the huge scar on his chest i think that that gave him like this huge notoriety coming into the ufc everyone's like oh shit dude like that dude got stabbed in the chest saying no one gonna beat him like he's fucking crazy yeah (laughs) and i i think people just kind of like took that and ran with it and i i think people put the expectations way too high for blagoy ivanov do you think that maybe people thought that he will be the the next big thing because he trained at AKA and maybe people miss Cain Velasquez so they thought oh listen look he lo- it looks a little bit like him so maybe he's the next Cain yeah, Velasquez. Yeah, just can't wrestle like him. Yeah, he, he's just not the same. Listen, there's no two Cain in this world. There's only one Cain and no, Blago I mean, is a good fighter. We're talking about you know being a great wrestler. He only had one takedown out of three attempts. Yeah. Significant strikes, Sakai landed 78 out of 161 and 89 total strikes out of 174. Completely outpunched Blagoy Ivanov it, in both categories almost by 20. Hey, listen, we, I believe the word didn't learn from Lyoto Machida. Those Japanese Brazilian that we don't even know where are they from, they are dangerous because they have that Brazilian culture and the, and the Japanese culture. Yeah, for so, sure. So, yeah, I believe we, we forgot about those kind of dudes. Sakai may be like the dark horse of this division right now. Yeah, you never know. I really think the sky is the limits for him. The young man is in a old man's division and could yeah. really, really set this thing ablaze. Yeah, exactly. Now, in the main event, I want to talk about our good friend Gilberto Burns here for a second. What an amazing performance that he put on. Outstanding. I knew it was going to happen. I had a smidge of a fucking doubt, though, when he walked out there and they looked each other in the eyes. When they, at first, it looked like Gilbert, it was the moment was a little too much for him. And then you just seen him. He kind of like ducked down on him and then Gilbert Burns, you know, El Dorino turned on and you just seen him for 25 minutes step in the 
fucking middle of that octagon and take it to Tyrone Woodley. The entire time Woodley was off of his back foot. It was an amazing performance. I want to talk about the coach. I think personally, Henry Hoof has the secret ingredients to beating Tyrone Woodley. I think if you throw Vicente Luque at Woodley next, it's Woodley's last fight. I think Henry Huff and Hard Knocks 365 have figured out the chosen one. Uh, he definitely wrote a book about how to, to beat Tyron Woodley. Definitely, there's no pressure, doubt about that. Pressure, pressure. Uh, listen, at the end of the day, Tyron Woodley is still a very dangerous fighter. I don't think that you can toss him any fighter and just give him give them the game well, plan. Vicente is not any learn. fighter. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Vicente is not any fighter. And Tyron Woodley, uh, he, is, that, he, he, he is getting old. He is getting old. Like, I can feel the age right now. I believe that's something maybe because of that. I'm not sure about that, but I, I do believe so. Uh, he's, he's, not, he's past his prime. He's not looking as dangerous as he as he was. He's not as sharp. He's not the chosen one anymore. The guy that went in there and knocked out Robbie Lawler is not the guy that we see in the octagon now. I again, for five rounds, did not see Tyrone Woodley at all explode. Like yeah. what we're used to, like how he won the title, like how he beat Darren yeah. Till. Though even the last round against Wonderboy in the second fight, you see Tyron at he'll wait, he'll wait, he'll wait, and then Tyron will fucking yeah. explode on you. I haven't seen it in ten rounds of MMA. Tyron Woodley yeah. used used to when he w- move forward, you shit your pants because you don't know yes. what kind of bomb he's going to drop yeah. at you. And you know Look, those Robbie leg kicks. Lawler hadn't woke up for about a year and a half after that fight. Yeah, and those leg kicks, you know, ask Carlos Condit about those leg kicks. Uh, Tyron Woodley was the most dangerous fighter in his division, and right now he's past his prime. I appreciate everything Tyron Woodley did for this division. He's a tremendous fighter. I hope he go he come back to his uh, level. But right now, the competition, man, the, the, those new welterweight guys, they are straight killers. What is next for El Dorino, Gilbert Burns? Uh, listen, there is no Leon Edwards right now. Uh, Leon Nate cannot make it into the country at this point in time. Yeah, Nate is always talking about Masvidal, but there's uh, Nate Diaz is only talk. So Masvidal, Masvidal right now don't really have a fight, and he didn't sign against Kamar Usman. If I'm Gilbert, I will throw the, the name of Masvidal right now for Fight Island. Because that's what he do, you know. Gilbert just th- throw names and then they give it, they give it to them and have nothing to lose. So a fight like Masvidal would be great for him. Um, I could see Usman versus Masvidal, and if they can get Leon Edwards into the state somehow, yeah. Leon Edwards versus Gilbert Burns for the number one contender fight. Have them uh, fight on the same exact card, and if. For some reason, Burns gets past Edwards and Usman gets past. You could have those two in the cage that night face off against each other. You know there's going to be nothing but respect. You yeah. know there's not going to be a situation. You know there will be no showman or you know one trying to show up the other or bad blood because they are teammates. And they're going to show you, you know, the correct way of how you're supposed to do martial arts. And I, I really think it would be good for the sport. I think it would be good for Hard Knocks 365. And I think it would be good for both of their careers. But is it something that Dana White wants to see? I have no fucking clue, nor do I give a damn at this point. I, <laughs> let it happen, Dana. Listen, Dana wants to throw Mag- McGregor against uh, Usman. So no, I'm not sure no. he doesn't, he doesn't want to see this. said everyone just wants to fight McGregor, okay? I, I really, truly <laughs> think if you give Conor McGregor... To Kamara Usman, Usman eats him the fuck alive. And I am a big Conor McGregor fan. But I think, as everyone has pointed out at this point in time, I think Usman's a favorite fighter. I will never doubt McGregor because every time people doubted him, he always show up. Remember when people talked about Eddie Alvarez? But I do think that Kamara Usman is too big for him because Kamara in fight night, like the day of the fights, when he's if in the cage, it looks like a had heavy... a hard time with Habib on top of you. Yeah. What exactly. the fuck do you think it's going to be like with a man 
who outweighs Habib. Yeah, I agree with you. So uh, next for Gilbert, uh, if you can't bring Leon Edwards, who, who do you, who do you give him? I don't know, man. I, Colby. Does it? I, yeah, I, I can see that happening. Colby coming back, fighting. Uh, if that doesn't happen, uh, it's got to be one of those three guys. It's got to be Leo. Yeah, where, where, where's Bonzi Nibio? Where's Bonzi Nibio? He Santiago. hasn't fought since Vietnam, bro. Like, are we yeah, still talking about uh, Bonzi Nibio? No, no, no. But are we re- really talking about this guy? No, no, no. Right? But I, I want to talk about him for a minute because. When he was fighting, at some I point, he was right in the mix, you know? I'm not talking about Gilbert against him, but where the fuck is he? He's really missing in this welterweight division. Like I said, I was in my dad's nuts the last time we fought. Did he got suspended or something? No, bro, I don't know where he's at. He's chilling in Chile, Argentina. He, he, he fucked up, man. He really fucked up. He's definitely from Argentina, though, not Chile. My he man. is from Argentina. Yeah, he's chilling in Argentina. <laughs> that's, a, that's a straight fact. He's Very chilling in Argentina. Face. Sorry about yeah. that, okay? Yeah. But seriously, I, I got no clue where he is. We have, at this point, new contenders and new challengers for the belt. Yeah, he is. Exactly. Burns, Masvidal, Edwards, those three guys are the main three guys for a title shot. You can even throw Covington in four guys. Whoever doesn't get the title shot, let the other guys fight each other. I like and hell, if Masvidal doesn't get the title shot, give Masvidal to Nate one more time. Fuck yeah. it. The the Colby Gilberts are really like it. I believe it, it really makes sense. No, for sure. Anything else on UFC Fight Night Woodley versus Burns, my man? Uh, overall, it was a great card. I believe the main event. Uh, a lot of people actually predicted that Gilbert Burns was going to win. I was kind of surprised yeah. about that, but yeah. uh, they're surprised. But no surprise, you know. No, for uh, sure. And we gained a, a fight that, if you're trying to show somebody who's brand new about MMA, you yeah. definitely want to throw it on Billy Corntillo versus Spike Krill. Great fight. Yeah, I agree with you. So give me your three uh, fights, your three best fights that you three best. I'll watching. give you the three best performances. Billy Corintillo, for sure, 100%. Yeah. Okay? I'm going to go Chris Gutierrez and then Casey Kenny. Give okay. me your three best performances of the night. For sure, Gilbert. I believe Gilbert's performance was flawless. Uh, Mackenzie Dern, because it was her comeback, and her jiu-jitsu game is, was amazing. Schneeball. And Yeah, uh, and I will uh, say uh, Caitlin Caucasian, because uh, pure dominance like that is always, uh, you know, it's always amazing to see. Yes, but we totally snubbed Jamel Hill, so I pre- apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, you had a great performance. Yeah. Let's add the full fight and both of both of us uh, add Jamel Hill. That's both of us going with Jamel yeah. Hill. So yeah. that about wraps it up, guys. Stay tuned. Like us on Facebook, all that good shit. Uh, we're going to have UFC 250 breakdown probably today or tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. And check us out, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. It's all the same. And uh, stay classy, knuckleheads. Peace.